This investigation was fantastic. Um, being able to experience, because you know, you can you can explain something or hear somebody explain something a million times, but when you actually experience it, um, it's 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 incredible. A fantastic night. Um, definitely something I will always remember. Um, I think one of my highlights was hearing my name being called out on the recorder. Definitely worth every penny of it tonight. Every time I see you guys when I watch those, I mean, it's awesome. And now just to sit there and, and experience it for myself, it was, it was, it was great. It was just like it ties everything up. I uh, tell you what, it's a lot different when it, when you're actually doing it rather than uh, sitting at home watching the TV. I got a kick out of it. Well, I'd seen Haunting on Adams Street and seen walking through the different areas of the building between up here, even the museum, and um, I honestly wasn't sure what to be prepared for initially. I didn't know what areas that we would go into, um, but from what I'd seen, there's been numerous activity in multiple different rooms. With this building prior being a mortuary and building caskets here, there's there seems to be quite a connection with that as well. It's funny how they always are moving. Every time you come, there'll be different positions or grandma's hair is like more wild and then you can watch them and you can almost see them every once in a while. If you're looking, it, it, you can see them kind of moving. As soon as I walked up to that case, just like felt really heavy on my chest. Walked up here, same thing, knees kind of weak, heavy on the chest. Uh, just thought, wow, this is kind of, kind of crazy. I actually had quite a few things I seen myself. Uh, I actually seen a little light in the hall back there. Felt cold breezes multiple times. I saw what seemed to be like a little shadow every once in a while poking its head out around the corner over there. Uh, actually got some EVPs that answered my questions. I had my mask pulled off three different times and uh, we actually had somebody reply to us and say that they did it. Uh, I mean, the responses alone, just in general, is just crazy. Uh, the, you know, the REM pod stuff going off, you know, that, that's awesome. But when you have actual people talking back to you, that's, that's pretty neat. After a decade, here we are, back in Old Town Saginaw, where it all began. The funeral home was open for about a century, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 people came through the funeral home. We will be investigating the claims of the paranormal activity prior to us moving in the building, but my focus is the items in my collection. Whatever is in here was never a human being. Well, when she looks at me, her eyes are black. There's no white in, in the eye socket. They're just black. It's almost as if her hand is, is trying to reach out. It wasn't as, as though we had made eye contact, but I could tell that he sensed my presence. From what I've heard, the funeral director would go down to Potter Street Station. They would bring them back here, basically embalm them, and send them further on to wherever their destination was. For me to be able to feel comfortable bringing in the public to see the collection, to see the museum, I know I can't do it until it's taken care of. Hundreds of items in these exhibits come from the locations that we've investigated over the years. We have to do whatever it takes to remove any negative or evil attachment from the items in the exhibit. My name is Jamie Bright. I'm a camera operator, paranormal investigator, and producer at Haunted Saginaw. I've known Steve Shippey since 2015 and have worked with him on many Haunted Saginaw cases. I was with Steve when he drove past the building and saw the for rent sign. And when he 
decided that he wanted to put his collection here, I thought it was a really great idea. You know, every year at the Haunted Saginaw premieres at the Temple Theater, he would only bring a fraction of his collection for people to see. And now people could come and see so much more of what he has collected. A lot of the items are very beautiful. I'm attached to many of the items and it just makes me proud to see them have a home and proud that people could come and enjoy them like they should be enjoyed. This place has a vibe to it. The moment we first stepped foot in here before it became ours, you could just feel this energy around you, almost like you were walking into someone else's home in a way. There was always that feeling that you were being watched, that someone was standing over your shoulder, kind of like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What is the purpose of that? There were plenty of times that I was working and I would turn around thinking that Steve was walking in and nobody would be there. Also voices. Voices are very common to just randomly hear when you're doing work and then you hear a person talking. You can't really make out what they're saying, but it's definitely a person talking, specifically the cursed items display really has a lot of activity. There's been numerous times that we've heard knocks on the glass of the cursed items display. One thing that happened to me in the museum that just really scared me. I screamed at the top of my lungs when this happened. We were doing an interview upstairs and I had to come down here for something. As I was coming to the entrance of the Finn Road room, I heard a very loud, dragging sound and I stopped dead in my tracks because I knew I was the only one in here and a moment later before I even had time to register what I was hearing we have a ram's head that was sitting on one of the display cases it just fell over on its own the dragging sound that I heard was its horns sliding on the wall and dragging and then it just slammed right onto the display case. Hi, I'm Tracy Spresny and I work here at the Haunted Saginaw Museum right in Old Town Saginaw. First time I was here at the building, it has a very unique vibe when you walk into it. There's a different energy to this building. Even within the first couple hours, things started to happen. I heard things you felt things. It was a very exciting place to be, very active. I first experienced a sound of something very heavy being pushed across the floor. And it just wasn't once, it was like it was continually being pushed. I heard a woman sobbing uncontrollably in the floor above us, and I've heard a baby cry. In a smaller room on the second floor that's going to house most of our darkest collection, I was in there mopping one night. There was no one else in the building. I heard a voice, a male voice, say, hello. I knew it wasn't Steve's voice because he wasn't here. And I turned around and there was no one there. Steve and I were sitting out in the museum having a discussion one night and the room got very cold. And Steve asked me if I was cold and I was not right at that second. And just after he asked that, I felt something brush by my face and it was ice cold. He actually said that he could see my breath while I was talking. In the cursed items, there is one particular item that I have seen actually move several times. The item I'm talking about is grandma and we do have another item in there that is continually bending forward and flopping over. It's a very eerie feeling. It's almost like a lot of them are looking straight back at you and they're actually seeing you. They're watching you watch them. And there's a few of them that I swear their eyes have moved. You know, they're, they're taking you in as much as you're looking at them. It's like there's a curiosity about why we're here and what we're doing.
Hi, I'm George Brown. I'm the creator of the Geoport, and right now I'm here in Saginaw, Michigan. Yeah, a lot of people ask me what a, a, a Geoport is, and I can't vouch for what spirits are, how they are physically interacting uh, with this universe, but the Geoport uses scanning radio. It uses uh, reverberation, stochastic resonance to boost signals, and it also uses EMF pickup modulation. So those three things together uh, somehow tend to either boost the signals that are coming in or, or maybe they just offer some less friction for whatever's coming through from the other dimension. I'm an engineer and I've always been tinkering with electronics and tearing everything apart, putting them back together. I've always been interested in it. In college, I was an electrical and mechanical engineer. When I went into the Air Force, I became an electrical systems specialist. Just something that always drew me to it, something I enjoy doing. I grew up in a house that had lots of paranormal events, the knockings, you see things moving. Every once in a while, somebody might touch you. Disembodied voices. Our house, we even got like the weird phone calls. You know, you'd get a voice on the, on the other end and, and then it'd be static. Um, um, there's, there was even a time where my sister uh, went through a period where she was tormented. She would see apparitions every once in a while. We'd, we'd see an apparition or somebody would talk, like wake you up. They'd just say something or scream something like right close to your ear. So I knew that paranormal was real and I've always been interested in possibly making something to, uh, to prove it. Designed and built the first Geoport in the hospital waiting room. Well, my sister was actually in the hospital. She, uh, she fell going to the mailbox and it turned out that she had a heart attack and she had also a, like a clot in her neck. They rushed her in for surgery. Um, they actually gave her like a 50-50 chance. Um, that, it was there in that waiting room that I put the box together. I don't, I don't know if, you know, just the, criticality of the situation made me decide, you know, if I'm going to build it, I better, you know, why not build it now, you know? I don't know, maybe worried about not being able to talk to my sister again, had something to do with it. I couldn't believe it when the, when I put it together and actually worked and honestly, I didn't think I was going to be able to build another one. Being an engineer, I figured, you know, just have some faith in yourself and Try it again, keep track of everything you do, and see what happens, and sure enough, it, it, second time around, second one worked, third one worked, and you know, on and on and on. There was a friend of mine who had committed suicide, and I, I got his voice, and he called me by name, and that was one of the very first voices I got through there. And then I knew, you know, there was something definitely real going on with the box. It was kind of overwhelming, but it was it was almost addicting too because I knew it was something special and something I wanted to try to improve on. I've heard, you know, people telling me, you know, that they've got to talk to their aunt or their uncle or their dad came through. Yeah, I definitely believe in it. Just goes to show you I take it <laughs> with me when I go to the cemeteries too to visit because every once in a while you'll get a voice come through. Pretty compelling. When Steve reached out to me about the Haunted Saginaw Museum, that was really exciting to me and um, we talked back and forth, you know, how I might be able to help out and uh, we ended up coming up with building two of the biggest geoports, I guess, museum pieces to put in the, here. Classic antique uh, type EMF pickup. Um, uh, it's another noise. Throughout the interview, and even upon his initial arrival, George was continuously experiencing unexplainable sounds, seeing shadowy figures, and other strange phenomena. We decided to use the new Geoport, together, for the first time. Would anybody like to communicate with George and I? We'd like to talk to you. How are you? My name is Steve. 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 Yes, nice to meet you. Definitely sounded spiritual. Listen, Steve. 
You see me? I think it sounded like it said I see you. What part of the museum are you in? Are you this way? Are you this way? You get touched? Dude. Did you just touch me? I think it said I just touched him. I'm not sure. That was cold. No, whatever you did, Steve felt that. Investigation. Investigation. Investigation, yeah. It just said investigation. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. Can you help us with the investigation? With so much activity taking place, we decided to do a full-on investigation with additional gear. While placing the devices around the museum, George had a startling encounter. We're about over there where your EMF meter was. <sighs> I saw what looked like almost like the, the Voorhees sweater type of like a white off like wool sweater with like a person's head just for a second. I turned around and it was like somebody was standing there right beside the box. Right here by the box? Yeah. Right over here. Did my friend George just see you standing here? Did you want to talk to us? Did my friend George just see you standing here? Did you want to Ooh. talk to us? Did my friend George just see you standing here? Did you want right to talk here. To us? It said right here, and then there's something at the end, here. Did my friend George just see you standing here? Did right you here. want to talk to us? Just moments after analyzing the disembodied voice captured on the recorder, George witnessed another full body apparition. I for a split second saw a silhouette of a person right there. And it was just a second, it was right there. Whoa. All I saw was the arms and the torso. This is wild. I saw it standing up right in front of that window right there. You think you could come toward me? Can you tell us your name, please? Oh, there's a response. Can you tell us your name, please? The oh my God. What does it say? I think he just said by the window. Can you tell us your name, please? By the window. By the window. And that's where you said you saw it. Yeah.
we have a device here that you can talk to us way more clearly. It might be easier for you to communicate with this. Do you think you could follow us over here? If you're close to us, you could touch that device exactly what I was gonna say. Can you move over to this device? We're gonna turn it on now. Do we see you by the window? I think that's a yes. Something about it. You'll hear him or something like that. What was that? Was that the meter? Almost like Morse code. How's it doing it like that? I think something just moved right there to the left of that pillar light. Ooh, I was just getting hit. Did you see it? Yeah. Look at this, guys. Yeah, look at that. Look at this. Yeah, that shouldn't be nothing there. Who's, who's over here? And then nothing. Oh, there's a cold. It's going down here. Up uh, moved. It was cold here and then it went down to here. These readings are like off the duck. chart. I mean, what I saw was right, right about here and it looked like it just moved. That's what caught my attention. I mean, what I saw was right, right about here and it looked like it just moved. That's what caught my attention. Yeah, so far being here tonight, I've seen two apparitions. The first apparition I saw was over by a window. It was like a quick, I looked over and what I saw was a torso of a person. And then the next one I saw, I turned and looked and for a split second I saw what looked like somebody wearing like a knit wool sweater standing for a moment and then they were gone. This would have to be a 10 out of 10 because I don't think I've ever seen two apparitions in that small period of time, you know, almost count on both hands how many times I've actually seen an apparition and to see two this short of a period of time is just unheard of. What I think might be interesting, uh, Steve and I had an experience off camera where we um, uh, ran into, I guess it was like an electrical field, you know, my hair was standing up and and then Steve's like, well look at this and his hair's standing up and he's got goosebumps and uh, I think Maybe we should go back over there and see if we can get some hits on the voice recorder or something. There's a presence here. We just came back to see if maybe you're still, still around. Can you tell us your name, please? Maybe it's moving this way because it wants us to come this way.
Can you give us a sign of where you are now? I feel like you let us down here. Whoa. Dark shadow down there moving from left to right. What is this room? It's locked up. George, put your ear up there. Tell me if you hear if you hear anything moving around. Yeah. Yeah, it's like... What the heck was that? The crashing sound was so loud, we could actually feel it reverberating under our feet throughout the old wooden floors. Upon a thorough search of all the connecting hallways, we found nothing out of place and no way to explain the anomalous sound. We decided to head back to the end of the hallway in an attempt to communicate with whatever was on the other side of that locked door. Hold up to the door, maybe. We'd like to talk to you. Can you talk to us right now? Just real quick, please. And then we'll, then we'll leave. I'm sick. Was that him coughing in the beginning? Was yeah. that? <laughs> I'm sick. Yeah. Thank, thank you, sir. We won't bother you anymore. Let us know if you need anything. Just checking up on you. Wow. That was incredible. Yeah, it was. Wanting to learn more about the building's history, as well as the surrounding land, I decided to bring in local historian Leo Lefevre, a friend that we have called upon for information regarding several investigations throughout the years. Okay, the first piece I have here is from the uh, history of Saginaw County, an account from the Army surgeon who came with Major Baker and his, his men, who came up here in 1822 to build a fort to uh, keep an eye on the natives and also make sure that the fur trade wasn't interrupted because the fur trade was the major money maker. The winter of 1822-23 was especially harsh. And then in early or late spring, there was a quick thaw. There was no dry land. As the weather got warmer, there were more and more mosquitoes. And after several of the major's men died, including his brother and his son-in-law were members of his troop. They both died. Everybody was sick. He said, we gotta leave. We're all gonna die here. It was the environment that 
took its toll. Uh, oddly enough, I, that's also the same time that uh, smallpox went through the natives. And so in the general area, the estimate is that two thirds of the natives died immediately from smallpox. Wow. This area that we're standing now, this building, when was it first active as a funeral home? What year was that? 1904. And when we get up to the 1950s, they need more room. 1950s, more people have automobiles and they're big automobiles. So they needed more parking for funerals down here. So they had it torn down. And I do know a local historian who was there watching them tear this historic building down. And when they were preparing the um, ground to put the substrate down to pour the parking lot, there was a big circle about 50 feet in diameter that was charred, just a big charred circle. His best guess was that it was a ceremonial fire circle that would have been used sometime in the past. Wow, and how far would that be from where we're standing? Across the street. That close. The uh, small corner parking lot that is across the street, that's where it was. So it's just another piece of evidence that's disappeared about the original inhabitants of the Saginaw area. Leo, once again, thank you so much. Oh, you are very welcome, Steve. The information I received from Leo will certainly help me as I conduct these investigations. However, I was completely blown away when learning about the ancient Native American fire circle. The fact that there was such a sacred ceremonial place only feet away from my entrance surely must continue to affect the energy of the area, even today. But tonight, I need to focus my attention on the cursed and haunted items display, as myself and my staff are experiencing an uptick of activity. I'm going to open a line of communication, and any spirit attached to these items, I would ask that... Bam, right here. Got readings on the millimeter. Got a significant hit. Point two now. Okay, there are several items here, so I'm not exactly sure who is trying to reach out to me. So we're going to try a systematic process here. It's a device that will allow me to hear verbal messages. You can tell me which item that you're attached to. The doll? It sounded like it said the doll. Okay, wh which doll? What would you like to say to me? Are you happy with this, this new home I've provided you? Are you okay with this building? There's gonna be a lot of people here that wanna come see you all. How do you feel about that? Huge hit, huge hit. Massive hit. After receiving several direct responses, I knew that there were many spirits amongst us. I decided to use my SLS system to see if I could capture any images of the entities that were communicating. I've handled each one of you many times. I would like to think over the years, perhaps we've built a rapport. Would you like to come on out here? And say hello? I've got something, I've got an anomaly. Look at this. I said, come out and wave hello. Can you see me? Can you wave? Can you wave hello? Look at that. It's like it's trying to get out from the inside. You can see its hands on the glass. Are you trying to get out of there? Are you seeing this? It just literally looked like it grabbed the door handle. All right, where did you go? Come on, give me a sign of your presence. Show me where you went. Can you knock for me? Can you set off one of my meters? I have them everywhere.
right there, right in front of us. The music box just went off. Are you in front of me? Set that device off again, please. Yep. It's not registering on the SLS, but something is clearly setting off that motion sensor. Could you please go back to the case? Can you go back to the doll that you were in? Oh my God, look at this. Look at this. There's two anomalies. One just disappeared. Now there's still one here. Now they're gone. There was two. I would like to ask any spirit who left the display case, could you please return? Got an anomaly, same spot. Whoa, it just reached right over. It reached right, did you see that? It was reaching right over here, extended its arm all the way. Oh my God, that just gave me the chills because I'm thinking about the anomaly we caught. This is the Finn Road display. During that investigation, there was that anomaly that reached all the way across. And that's exactly what this looked like. God, I hope nothing from there is here. My name is Michael Orweiler. I'm from San Clemente, California. I worked at a nuclear power plant for over 35 years. Some of what I've learned at the nuclear power plant has to do with the conduction of electricity, of course. So I really think that the biggest reason that Steve invited me out to investigate with him is that uh, I have a skeptic past prior to 2013 and I don't immediately jump into the paranormal category if I see or hear something. Uh, it's more of a scientific approach. I want proof that it was paranormal, uh, that, uh, that it was something that happened that we don't understand and there's no other explanation for it. He and George Brown had performed an earlier investigation and there were some voices and uh, sounds coming from a room that was locked that they couldn't access. So one of the things that Steve and I are going to do is follow up and uh, apparently we have access to that room and we're going to go in and take a look and uh, see what we can find. All right, so this is that hallway, Michael, where George and I had that experience. Um, let me kind of show you how that all began. So I'm showing George around the old funeral home and we got to a point which was right about here. As we walked into this area, there was this feeling. It was so strong that neither one of us, could you hear that knocking? Yes. plain as day. It definitely came from right here. Whatever yes, it was. that's where I heard it from, right in this area right here. Would somebody like to communicate with us? We heard you knocking. Would you like to knock for us again? We have some devices here on the staircase. These lights, you can come up and you can touch these. If you do so, this is another way you can alert us of your presence. Now it's setting off the millimeter. Yeah. All the way in the back. And it stopped right as we approached the door. 
but we got that camera on it right there, so there's no question the camera would have caught that. Do you feel that change of... Yeah, I do. Can you tell us what made you sick? Is there anything we can do to help you feel better? Wow, look That's at a that. pretty big spike. That's a big spike. Huge hit. And it just got a little colder too. Look at the flashlight, guys. Look at my flashlight. Are you getting that? Yeah. Are you gathering energy? There was definitely battery drain happening right then. I decided to use the exact same digital recorder that George had placed under the door in our previous investigation. If this is indeed the same spirit, it is probable that we should receive some sort of response. Do you remember this device? Please speak right into this. Can you tell us your name? You know damn well that was footsteps. What'd you hear, Steve? There was footsteps. I mean, several. It sounded like somebody walking. And what, I mean, what's so creepy about it, too, is it wasn't just footsteps. You could, it's almost like swishing, yes. like clothing. You yeah. could hear the clothing. Meter's going off again. That was incredible. There's no question that was footsteps out there. I left that recorder running. Let's see if I put it down as soon as we heard that shuffling. Oh my Shit. God. Okay, so we, uh, we completely believe that we're communicating with you again, sir. What would you like to say? I'm gonna put this device down again. We're gonna try this one more time. 
if I do hear something out there, I'm not going to leave the room. I'm going to stay here because we're here for you right now. I'm going to hit record. What would you like to say to us? At the beginning, it says, sounds like it's, I'm going to tell you something. At the very end, I swear, the last thing it says is, my name is Robert. Now that I have absolute confirmation that we have made contact with the same spirit, I decided to turn on my ITC communication device as well as operate the SLS system in an attempt to locate the one who calls himself Robert, although I feel the spirit is not alone. Robert, how old are you? We got something, guys. Did you guys see that? It was right right there. Look at this. Right on the trigger object. He's gone. There it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. He just went all over the place. Look he's at this. Oh my God, he's on the wall. Two entities. We have two, two anomalies. See, I knew he wasn't alone. I knew there was somebody else. That's incredible. They're gone. The results of the investigation were incredible. Not only did we make contact with the same spirit, but we were actually able to get his name. Perhaps as we learn more information, we could discover who this person was and if he had any association with this area. Speaking of getting new information, after meeting one of the building's tenants, Luca, who operates an art studio on the second floor, I learned that he has had multiple experiences that he is unable to explain. We've arranged a formal sit-down interview with him to learn as much of the details as we possibly can. My name is Luca Jubena. I'm an oil painter. I started painting uh, with my grandfather when I was 14 years old. He had been trained uh, in Poland, and so on the weekends I would go visit my grandparents, and it's something that always uh, stuck with me. And finally, when I got out of the military, I was able to get my master's in fine art and sort of pursue it with a little more, um, I guess, gusto than, than a hobby. Uh, and so when this place became available and I saw that they had different spaces, I was immediately interested in, in, in renting a spot here. Basically, just over the phone, he said, well, I've got a room and it's got three sinks, so that should be perfect for you. And um, we basically did a tour of this place and this is the first room he showed me. And I said, well, this is the old embalming room, right? And he said, yeah, of course. And I said, well, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with that process also. The location to me was fine um, um, initially. It had been closed down for, I think, three or four years. I heard that the last embalming that actually was done here was in 2017. I was just happy to get a space that had a good wall space and had water that was running into it so I could clean my oil brushes, and that was really the, the main thing that I was looking at. I'd say my first experience uh, in this building happened about two weeks after moving here. I had moved in here and I started uh, moving shelves around. And I started playing with different types of glue, basically, to see what would hold onto the wall, but not basically, you know, do permanent damage, but would be strong enough to uphold a couple of paintings on it. So as I was playing with these different glues over the course of about a week, I got used to the sound of three paintings falling down with uh, the temporary sort of shelving that I had built on it. One night, I'm the only one on the second floor, there are, there, I'm the only one in the building at this time. It sounded like, if I had to bet on it, it sounded like 
three paintings fell down with a shelf. And I mean loud, like crashed towards the ground. That was one of those hmm moments that I sort of, well, it makes you wonder. It's like, well, what exactly is that? The second most notable one, uh, the, the second most notable time, something bizarre happened here that was unexplainable was probably about two to three weeks after the initial happening, which was mostly auditory. And um, I had moved into this place and, and I was sitting in there painting and, and sort of getting everything situated. And uh, the door just continually would keep opening. This door would, would open up. I came out here and none of the other doors are open. None of the windows are open. There's no draft in the building. And I actually like verbalized, I said, could you please stop opening the door? And I put a lock on one side and, and actually drill the hole to, to go to the top. And when I'm in there actually working, um, I have gotten in the practice of locking the door and sometimes even putting something uh, sort of behind it because it was really jarring when you're painting and all of a sudden this door keeps opening. Um, that probably happened 12, 13 times in one night. A couple things that have thrown me off here, and this is before anybody has come through the building. This is when the building was vacant. Uh, of course, buildings have different scents and smells, and some of the smells that, that you have here is like old wood, and sort of it gives off like a light, maybe tobacco scent, if anything. But there'd be times I would walk through here, and not in this room, but in other rooms, uh, the old casket room and the office. I'd walk through there, and you'd get a floral scent. And it wouldn't last long. It would just sort of hit you, and it sort of passed. And it was almost with the intensity of as, as if somebody had walked by. And that felt more like a feminine presence to me. And here, there's even times in here where I'm sketching something and I've designed the room in such a way where my back is to the wall because there would be times that I would be in there painting and I would feel like there would be somebody either behind me or breathing or watching me. And the, the, uh, the feeling would be very intense sometimes. The same feeling sometimes, that intensity that you have of somebody watching you, I've oftentimes gotten when leaving here. So when I leave here at night and I close up and I'm the only one in the building and uh, I'm going down, um, I, I've made it a point to always call somebody and talk to them as I'm walking out. And uh, I think that's more to keep me mentally distracted than anything, just because I've had a few times in here where again, walking downstairs, you just don't feel like you are alone. From what I've heard, um, the funeral director that ran this funeral home basically would go down to Potter Street Station and this extended back to people that even died during World War II. And anybody that had died north of here would get picked up by the funeral director. They would bring them back here, um, basically embalm them and send them further on to wherever their destination was. So this place, in the 97 years that it operated, saw tens of thousands of bodies come through here. Hello, I am Miss Aida. I am a hoodoo practitioner, a witch, a bruja, and an author. I have published four books, and I have two coming soon. If there's a possessed object, if there's a bewitched object, I still can get in the line of fire, and that is the danger that's involved. A lot of times we'll have a lucky suit or a lucky necklace or a lucky ring, right? It has absorbed a lot of positive energies and that's why it's lucky. On the other hand, we may have objects that cause us bad luck and those objects have absorbed negative energies. So an entity can willingly enter an object. That's one way they can do it. Another way is they are summoned into an object for a particular purpose. Having worked with Steve Shippey on a demonic possession in another case, he again called me to investigate his haunted collection. He wants me to see and identify which of his objects have either a possession, have obtained negative energy, or are bewitched. And I will determine what they are and determine whether or not they're dangerous and how to contain their energies. So first and foremost, I sent you an iron cross and entities are appalled by iron and that is 
the one most important thing. I've also brought along holy water from Lourdes, France, and this water comes from a grotto where the Virgin Mary had appeared, and I swear by this water. And then last but not least, um, I am going to be covering my head. As I told you, that entities will attach themselves to the back of the head and the neck. So what I am going to do is to put some of this vapor rub on the back of my head and my neck, and then I'm going to seal it off with holy water, and then I'm going to immediately, immediately apply this turban to protect myself. Although Miss Aida's microphone had no issues previously, as soon as she stood in front of the cursed item's display, it was experiencing extreme static and feedback. As a result, we had to resort to using the audio from the camera in my hand. These are very beautiful, very beautiful. Entities can be ancient and they have a lot of knowledge that we'll never acquire. And for that I respect them. This one I believe has a spell on it. As soon as you said that, we're picking up hits right now on the millimeter. It's registering some kind of temperature fluctuation. Only minutes into the investigation, it had become apparent that the entities around us were using my equipment as a means to communicate with Miss Aida. So just so you know, something is messing around with my right shoulder, if you could, um, can you put a, a K2 meter over my right shoulder? Yes. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Anything? Yeah, there's, there is a signal here. Okay. Well, there was a big spike right there. Okay, okay, okay. All right, he's going away now. Um, oh, no, back, back, he's back, he's back. Yeah, it's on orange. It just hit orange. Okay. I do want you to know that this is my right side. So that tells me it's tickling me now. It's telling me that it doesn't mean harm. It doesn't mean me harm. Okay. When we have things affecting our left side, it can be a warning. Yes, I understand you don't want to hurt me. Okay. I get it. But you know what? We have to we have to explore the others. Thank you. Because of time constraints and the vast amount of items in the collection, I have decided to montage the following footage as to be able to highlight some of Miss Aida's findings. Wow, there's a lot of energy coming from it. This whoa. Wow. Now that was really interesting, Miss Aida. When you opened that case, did you hear a loud female voice? Yes. I thought it was my imagination. No. Wow. Whoa. I'm telling you, there's a lot going on here. This shelf here is a plethora of energies. I think you have a lot of entities in these. I really do. And I have a pain right here, a sharp pain. They're saying, don't touch me. I won't touch you again. Steve, you had sent me a picture of this entire cabinet. And I couldn't stop thinking about this, this doll here. 
I do believe that there is something very evil in this. I do not, you know, don't let the grandma deceive you and the grandpa deceive you. That's not what's in here, okay? Whatever this is, whatever is in here, was never a human being, ever. This one here has an entrapped soul. And I do believe that this one has entrapped whatever is in here. After Miss Aida identified this evil attachment, I decided to use some of my equipment to see if we could communicate with the human spirit she believes is trapped in the doll beside it. We would like to communicate with the human spirit that resides in this vessel here. Can you please tell us who you are? Do you need help? Can we help you? Is it moving? I can definitely see that it is moving. Yep. To the human spirit that's here, do you need help? We're being deceived. We're being deceived, and that's what negative entities do. They do they're deceptive. There was, there was footsteps right behind you. I mean, 100%. Okay. Like, it's giving me okay. the chills. I couldn't believe it. Something came right up here. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Who is just behind us? Can, you, can we get a name, please? I think this is about it for my comfort zone. Okay, we'll cut off communication. The results of the investigation were shocking to say the least. The strangest thing about these two items is that they were very new to my collection. I had purchased them from an antique store after learning from one of the employees that nobody would buy them. He went on to say that some people had weird vibes around the dolls and that they would probably never sell. After bringing them home, I started noticing strange occurrences in the area where I kept them. My name is David Ford. Um, I'm the owner of DNA Painting. I've, I've lived in the Saginaw area for over 40 years. I am a second generation painter. When I moved into the building, um, it was nothing but positive energy. It, everything felt uh, just very, um, very uplifting and uh, like this was really going to be a, a great place for me to actually expand my business. I was in the building for probably at least four or five months before I actually heard or saw any, anything that kind of uh, grabbed my attention like it was not normal. One of the first experiences that I had in this building was actually with my youngest daughter and we were walking through a hallway area and had a huge breeze come toward us. It grabbed both of uh, my daughter and I's attention and she kind of looked at me like she knew something wasn't, what was out of place. And as we looked around, there was not a single window even in the area for a breeze to be coming through. And uh, I think probably one of the first things that I really, that really grabbed me was uh, standing in the bathroom and looking in the mirror. And in the reflection of the mirror behind me, I could see my vehicle and I saw a blonde haired girl sitting in the driver's seat of my vehicle. And of course, when I turned around, there was nothing there. But at the same time, it was not a scary feeling at all. It was just a, a very positive, just like, wow, I, I can't believe I just got to experience that. A lot of uh, the spirits, I guess, uh, that I would see are always in the same places. I see a, um, a younger blonde haired girl standing at the elevator door a lot, but I only see her when I'm in a certain part of the garage. And I would say that she has to be probably in between eight and 10 years old, not sad or anything, but standing at the elevator door with the door open uh, as if she's waiting for someone that's in the elevator to come out. There's a particular spirit that I see uh, upstairs on the second floor a lot 
that is always standing at the fuse box. But I only see them when I come down from the third floor. As soon as I enter that doorway, he always seems to be standing right there at the fuse box. The only time that I can think of that I ever really had a negative feeling, and that was uh, going up the elevator. When I go up the elevator, I can approach the second floor and I can look underneath of the crack kind of ahead of time before I make it all the way up. And I happened to stop right at that crack. This is when I had seen uh, a gentleman that was balding on top, heavier set, and he looked like he was doing his rounds in the room. And that particular room is the room where they would bring uh, the bodies up the elevator and they would go on, on uh, basically casket racks that were up there. And it looked as though he was doing his rounds, walking back and forth. It wasn't as, as though we had made eye contact, but I could tell that he sensed my presence. And I got, I guess, uh, it was not a negative energy, but it was definitely, I, I got scared for a second. And so I just hurried up and pushed the button and made my, my way up and opened up the door and turned down the lights. Dave's eyewitness claims are as detailed as they are shocking. I am eager, yet cautious, to go up to that part of the building and attempt to communicate with that spirit who frightened him. Who is this man? What is his purpose here? And does he need help? All right, we've got multiple, jeez, industrial furnace just kicked on. We've got multiple cameras set up, a gamut of devices, vibration, motion, audio, video, K2, the list goes on. As I was walking in, I could hear what sounded like the Melmeter, which is placed there. There's a static camera right on that device, so I know that will pick up any readings, but definitely that was going off as we were walking in. The vibe in here is heavy feeling. It's uh, palpable. This is the area that Dave, the caretaker, had said he had seen that full body apparition standing here. And he was looking through the crack of where the elevator exposed some of the second fl floor. Okay, we've got a hit. Hello? I just wanted to point to a moment ago, it was temperature fluctuation. Right now it's magnetic field. There's some kind of energy it just dropped right there. You can see it's 0.1, so it keeps fluctuating. I would love to communicate with a particular spirit David had seen. He was standing over here, and from what David tells us, you became aware of his presence and you looked right at him. He believes you're keeping watch. That was his way of, of wording it. You're kind of a uh, guardian, a standing guard. That's going off too. First it was the Melmeter, now it's this device. I won't be afraid if you wanna show yourself to me, if you wanna interact. That's what I'm here for. You can knock or do something definitive so I know that device now. Thank you. I would love to talk to you. What is your name? Are you standing guard here? How many spirits are present now?
I'm going to record again. If you can come here toward me, toward my light, I'm in between these meters that you guys keep setting off. Please approach me and tell me what you want with this area. That might explain some of the actions that Dave has seen. People get the, the feeling from you, a rather intense feeling. Nobody thinks that you're bad. It's just they feel that you're very dominant, so to speak, that you have authority here. And perhaps you do. And I certainly am not here to challenge that whatsoever. Is there anything that we can do to help you? Would you, would you like our help? Can you let us know? If there are multiple spirits here, and I believe that there are, multiple people that I'm communicating with, try setting off more than one device. Set off as many as you possibly can. Just go to the glowing red lights and get as close to these glowing red lights as you can. There, that one's going off. That one's going off. Three, that's three different devices going off. Listen to this, it's chaos. Wow, this is just remarkable right now. Every single thing that is placed in here just all went off at one time. And that is impossible because they all work in different ways. These meters have different and specific purposes. The intelligence, the power to do such a thing. Whoa. Come on, come on, come on. What the hell was that? It was like a crash, something like crashed. Did you want me to come in here for a reason? I'd like to communicate with you. Who is in here with me? What the hell? Did that just pop? Maybe it just came unstuck for a minute? It 
It's interesting hearing the train go by right now and then thinking about what they said about Potter Street bringing bodies back here. It's surreal right now. I don't know if that just happened to pop right at that right moment, maybe from the weight of me standing here. Hello? Is anybody in here? Okay, I'm going to close the door. I will leave you alone. I'm sorry for disturbing you. I think we're gonna go out this way. My name is Tim Shaw. I am a spiritualist minister. I am a psychic uh, medium and I'm from Depew, New York. I'm trying to think when I started. I started actual paranormal investigating with a mediumistic slant right around 1985. Steve and I worked previously on a, on a project on a naval vessel. And um, because I do a lot of old school stuff, I do a lot of like seance and you know Ouija boards and, and that sort of stuff. It was a nice balance for what he wanted. You know, I've, he's used to using all the, all the tools and I kind of came in and just did my thing, and it's, which is a little bit different. I gotta tell you, there's so much energy in this building that it's amazing, but it's overlapping, so it can be a little confusing. I love places like this because they're almost like mysteries. They're just like, they're, they're, they're like not mystery novels that you can open up and you can examine. And that's what I'm hoping to do tonight. I'm hoping to get a couple answers. Uh, I really wanna know uh, the name of the person who is, there's one man, I'm, I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna reach out and I'll just tell you that I when I walked through the door there was one gentleman that was very strong here. I felt a lady or two walking around, but there's one gentleman that's so strong here, and I'd like to go and I'm hoping that we can contact him, get his name, maybe get a little bit of his story, just to find out why he's still here. And I have my I have my my suspicions, but I want him right from the horse's mouth. I'm gonna tell you right now, walking right into this space, there's something that hits me right in the solar plexus and it's like powerful. It's a, it feels as if it's a male entity, it feels like it's a male energetic personality, very, very strong, very dominant. D comes in, plays D, the, the, the name D, Dan. Daniel, Dan, that comes into play very, very strongly. This is a person that just like, it's almost like this is my job. I watch, I wake, I, wa I wake, I watch. And we walk a little bit further here. This is like crazy, right, right here. Because it feels as if as I walk through this threshold, I'm feeling like almost, I get almost dizzy in this area. It feels as if I'm starting to swirl a lot. And it's almost as if it's like, there's a wall here. There's like an invisible, like static wall that I'm walking through and I'm actually picking up a lot. What I would try to do is I would try to communicate to him and say, we, wa we wanna help this building survive. We wanna help this building be a place for living people again. 
for people to come in, for people to enjoy it. And he's not understanding that. He's not understanding it. I, earlier, when we had been talking, it felt that something was watching us. And as I was looking, I saw a head and shoulders, just like from here up. And it was like this. It looked as if it looked out. It was a, a, just like a, like a shadow. And that's the best way I can describe it. It's like a shadow person or whatever. And that is another entity that is in this, in this location. That is someone separate than the stronger one. This is a, and I can't, get, I can't get a reading on it if it's a male or female, but it was very curious to watch what, we, you know, what you were doing in this area. This room, this room is like a kick in the teeth. I'm gonna, this, it's like almost as if when I walk in here, there's a lot of energy in here. There's a lot of energy in here. It feels as if it almost overwhelms me when I walk in here. This mirror, I don't know if it's indigenous to the rest of the collection. If it all came to, this mirror you should cover. And the reason why I say this mirror you should cover is because this feels as if that there is a spirit or a soul that had gone and went into the mirror. And I know that's an old wives tale and the whole thing, but I'm a firm believer in it. This is a mirror that I would at least drape some kind of a dark cloth over it. What I'm feeling with this mirror is that it witnessed sadness, a lot of sadness. This is not indigenous to this building. This is something that I don't know, it, it feels as if it's familiar, but I'm not, I, I can't be sure. But I feel that the energy of, the emotion of sadness is still in here. The atmosphere of this room, like oxygen, is just being pulled out of it. And I don't know if your visitors get it in this room, but this is almost a dizzying effect to me. It, I, it, feel, it feels almost confusing. It feels like my brain is being confused in here. I'm, ha I'm having trouble breathing. I'm feeling, I'm feeling four main entities in this building. The male out there, and I feel three other, at least two women that are part of this, this building. Wow. Here's another mirror. I'm just going to tell you, Steve, I don't, I don't want to tell you what to do with it, but I would put a drape on that one too, at least a partial drape on it. Again, I'm feeling that that's just, that witnessed something negative. That witnessed something negative in this place. Not in this place, but wherever it came from. I mean, it, feels, it feels like when I look into it almost as if I was scrying, it feels like a woman's face looks back out at me. And the woman that I'm seeing coming out on here is, a, is an older lady, gray hair with her hair in a bun, abundantly lined, but when she looks at me, her eyes are black. There's no white in, in the eye socket. They're just black. I'm, 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 I'm laboring, I'm laboring, trying to breathe. It's, I'm very, it's, I feel like as if I'm slipping very, very slowly. This location is high up on my, this place is haunted scale. Just not speaking as a medium just as someone who came in here and experienced stuff. Shadow people, massive cold spots, floor vibrating. We've got knocks, we've got sounds. This place has it all. This place has really got a lot of stuff going. Thank you for bringing me out here because this, this was probably one of the Mount Everest of haunted locations that I've ever been in. So thank you guys, this was great. This was just great. After reaching back out to Dave the caretaker, I've arranged an investigation of his workspace. I decided to enlist some additional help. With the amount of activity that Dave has experienced, I figure the more eyes, ears, and gear, the better. My name is Josh Hurd. I'm a paranormal investigator, author, and curator of Malvern Manor in Malvern, Iowa. I've been investigating the paranormal for roughly 25 years at this point. I initially met Steve on a very personal case uh, involving my brother. So initially learning that Steve wanted to open a museum, I was all about it. I think it's awesome. 
Uh, it's going to be really cool for the area. You already have a location with significant activity, and now you have Steve coming in and bringing his entire collection of haunted objects and haunted items and kind of throwing that into the mix as well. It's almost like a powder keg of potential activity. Just, I mean, maybe five minutes ago, Tops, upstairs grabbing a chair with Jamie, and as I get right to the top stair just coming down, I see a full body apparition, certainly a male, standing in just one of these side rooms back there. God, it's still doing it. Dude, that was so weird. What are you feeling? Dude, it's like this weird atmospheric pressure change that just makes my ears pop. It's like usually I'll experience that if something is like getting close, I mean, a lot of us like have weird feelings and stuff like that, but this is certainly one of mine. But it's never been like this before. This is intense. It's almost like whatever it is is just right here on the staircase. Only minutes into the location, Josh has already had multiple experiences, witnessing a full body apparition, hearing sounds, and even being physically affected. We headed to the garage and set up multiple devices to increase our odds of capturing evidence. Knowing that this is a paranormal hotspot, I'm eager to begin this investigation and perhaps witness some of this phenomena firsthand. talking okay was it before we even entered the room yes. right you heard that it yes. almost sounded like i don't know what i heard like maybe like a little girl or something it was very odd but it was something a little more high-pitched a little sure. girl possibly okay so i guess let me just start giving you the, the history dump right now so what you don't know when you say a little girl what was that the rem rem pod boom Ooh. Temperature and huge bang. Okay, so this all happens the second we walked in. Also, I just saw what looked like a shadow kind of break the red of the elevator. Right. But I do have the laser grid set up on that. So if anything moves, theoretically, we're going to catch it. Okay. When Dave was standing here talking to us, he had said that he'd seen several apparitions in this location. One of them is a young girl around nine years old that would stand by that elevator door right there. Yeah, and then... Wow. The laser grid was already detecting several anomalies. The display screen was not only showing the location of the anomalies, but also indicating that they are colder than the ambient temperature of the room by displaying them in a blue color. Beyond that, oh my God, I can't even get a word out without the right. meter going off. Voice. Big time voice. Dude. That was Same a young girl. type of like pitch and timbre. Yeah. Yeah, that came from this way. Holy crap. It's literally like not even letting me finish telling you. So just keep your eyes peeled. Sure. There's a ton of activity. Okay. We don't want to go into the restroom here because I do have a camera placed. When Dave had gone in there to wash his hand in the reflection of this mirror in here, he saw an apparition a full body apparition of somebody in his vehicle that was parked over here. Oh. So he has seen several apparitions throughout the building, but this location here, Josh, yeah. this garage is a huge hotspot of activity. Wow. As you can clearly see. I mean, it's already, already been impressive and we just got started. So I don't even know what to think of this yet. 
We're here to communicate tonight on Dave's behalf. Laser grid, laser grid, right now. Can you come out here with us, please? Come toward the sound of our voice. Look at that. I mean, it's certainly picking something up. Like, definitely picking something up in here. And now I got you. Hello. Do you mind if we're in here? REM pod hit, huge hit on the REM pod. As soon as we walked in here, there's more than one spirit. There's more yeah. than one energy present. It's almost like they're all trying to get our attention simultaneously. Sometimes I kind of get a little apprehensive though. Is it warning us to not come in the elevator? Right. If somebody's in this elevator, which our meters are indicating that they are, can you please tell us who you are? Speak right into this device in my hand. Thank you. No, it said no. Straight up. That was a male voice. Yeah. Right there, that's the male meter on yep. the table. Yep, wow. Can you tell me why you don't want to speak to us? Or say your name? I'm gonna record again. We're here to help out. We're here to help Dave understand why he keeps seeing all of you. Do you have a message for Dave, perhaps, if not us? That was weird. It sounded like there was a tapping, like yeah. something tapped the recorder. Looks like it's curious. Well, we know somebody's in here. We heard you say no, and then you tapped my recorder. Do you think you could knock for us? Can you give us a sound? What the f- I don't know. Was that above us? Dude, it very well could have been. Like, is there a gap there? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Are you up there? Can you hear our voice? What was that? I just, I, wow. did you hear the voice? Yeah, it sounded like a young girl, like, hey, 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 we can hear you. <laughs> that was, was that? right, yeah, though, that was right here. Uh huh. Like something's in here with in us. In here, yeah, that was in here. All right, we're gonna try communication one more time with the audio device. Just give me a second, I just wanna see. Yeah. I mean, that came from right here. Mm -hmm. Is there something you'd like to say? Can you talk to us? Sounds like there's talking up there, dude. Yeah. Wow. 
this is pretty wild, man. It's this is pretty intense. It's all over the place yeah. everywhere we go. It's like we're hearing a conversation up there. This starts triggering the bangs, the footsteps, like all of this stuff. Initially, like just walking into the room, like before we even actually entered the room, I heard what I swear was a, a little girl's voice, which seemed crazy to me just because we were entering a garage area. It didn't really strike me as a place that a little girl would be or whatever, but then come to find out that um, it was significant in some way. The level of activity that we were experiencing tonight was unlike any other. It was literally like you didn't even know which way to turn because things were happening 100% of the time. Different pieces of equipment going off, different disembodied voices and noises and bangs and all this stuff that was happening. We had no idea that it was going to be that intense, but yet here we are. Though I would love to investigate every square foot of this building, I felt it necessary to allocate the rest of my time to some unfinished business. I have recently acquired a particular item from a previous investigation, an item that must be handled properly and with much precaution. My name is Michael Salerno. I'm a Catholic demonologist and I am from East Lyme, Connecticut. The cases that I deal with are primarily demonic in nature. I only take the worst of the worst cases. I'm not called in to help with a, a human spirit uh, case. I'm only involved in cases where people are being uh, hurt, uh, obsessed, possessed. Um, things are really much further progressed than anything a human spirit could do. So that is why I have built this case, because there's an item here that needs to go in it. It's not as easy as just getting some wood from a local lumber yard and making a case and throwing a lock on it with the item inside. You need to have a priest bless oil, and you need to soak the wood with this oil. And then you need to put it outside and let the sun bake the oil, the blessed oils, into the wood so it actually becomes one with the wood and makes a seal that these spirits cannot get through. So now that it's here, I don't know what kind of pushback I'm going to get, but I'm ready to start. I, 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 hope, I'm, I hope I'm doing all right. I, sure. I, I wish I was on camera more often. No, I know. Because... That's weird. So now that that happened, why don't you let me just say a, a, a prayer of protection because we're in the museum and these things are aware of what we're talking about. And uh, they may be trying to stop us even talking about it. So let me just say this prayer of protection. We've been in this situation before. Let's just do it now if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's going to be this prayer to St. Michael. In, in Latin. So, in nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancte, Amen. Sancte Michael Archangeli, defende nos in prelio contra nequincium et insidius diable estos presidium, in peritili Deus sublices de decarmor, tuque princeps militiae celestes, santana maleosque spiritus malignos, quia peregit sodium aramatum, peregantor mundo, divina virtute, in infernum de trute, Amen. In nomine Padre, et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. An ominous force was already making its presence known. Perhaps this was an intimidation factor, an attempt to detour Michael and I from properly containing the evil. Steve, if you are ready to open it, let me help you out. Let me see your hands. I'm going to put a little holy water. Just hold your both hands out and rub them together like you're going to wash your hands. Okay. 
when you open it, let me just hit it with holy water and then we'll try and figure out how we're gonna put these on the curtains. Yeah, the last time I put my hands on them was during said investigation. Yeah, and we all saw how the, what happened there. So with that being said, let's take all the proper precautions and let's open it. Okay. <laughs> Specifically, spit it to Sonic Day. Okay. One other thing I want to do. You okay? So that's really messed up. What's going on? I'm not going to say on the camera. For anybody that heard the name that it just said, they'll understand. First and last name completely associated with this. I just saw a man's face in this mirror. Okay. 100%. There was a man's face here. Head, shoulders, about this high. Definitely. And then when you hear, when you play this back and you hear the first and last name, but there was a face. He's here. What the hell just happened? I think it just got knocked out of my hand. Well, it's not going to deter me. That was a Saint intense Michael, growl. Padre Pio, please protect us. Sante Michael Arcangeli, Defende Nostra Braleo. Contrana quincium et insidious diaboli. Quia pergit sodium adam adam. Pervirguntor mundo. Divina virtute. Spiritus, ejo te ligio in nomine iso postetara cruce sancte. In nomine patris et fili spiritus sancte. Amen. After completing the binding ceremony, Michael closed the case, securing it with multiple locks. He and I will be the only two to possess the keys.
before his departure back to Connecticut, we had one more thing that needed to be addressed. I ask these questions in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Will you worship God with me? Do you like when I say a prayer in Latin? In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Michael, I've got the SLS ready, and I already just caught something. Just for a split second, as soon as I aimed it that way, something darted here, and it went right there. Look, here we go, right by the geo port right now. Let me turn this up. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Do you like it when I tap you on the forehead like that? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day this. our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. There's an anomaly right over by the geo port again, Michael. Right now it's picking up you, but it's also picking up something else. Are you upset that I am here? Have you ever walked the earth in human form? Can you touch this oil? Grandpa's touching your hand. Yes. Is this demon holding you here? Yes. Pray. That wasn't a good voice. All right.
Spirit, I bind you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Cross, by the power of the most precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority and power of the Holy Catholic Church of Jesus, St. Michael the Archangel, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul and all the saints, and I command you to leave immediately and quietly go to the foot of the cross to receive your sentence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bind all evil spirits of the air, water, ground, underground, and netherworld. In the name of Jesus Christ, so be it. After the investigation and the ceremony had concluded, both Michael and I were shocked by the power displayed from the evil entity residing in the doll. The ceremony had actually lasted several hours, and something took place that was so disturbing, I felt it best to remove the footage. But in the end, both Michael and I were confident that the darkness had been contained. Before this investigation could be concluded, we felt there was some recognition and healing that was in order. It was time to pay homage and respect to the Ancient Ones. My name is Justin Levitt. My spiritual name is Mashkiki Maingan, which is Medicine Wolf. I reside in Southern Oregon. I am here this time. A decade later, the spirits have called me back through my good brother, Steve Shippey. The spirits have called me back here to Saginaw once again to help some ancestors and help some of the, uh, the spirits that may be trapped here. As I approached this building, I could feel a power. It was a different kind of feeling. It was a feeling where it was known that that's what I was coming to do. A lot of things don't wanna leave. A lot of things don't know they're supposed to leave. A lot of things don't understand that uh, they're supposed to move on or, or not be attached to objects or buildings or to people. Um, and they uh, sometimes need that little push. You know, I've always kept and felt a very strong connection to Saginaw since I've been here. I've always felt that they would be calling me back. And I always felt that, that when that time came to be ready, um, I knew it wouldn't come fast uh, because, you know, it's, it's, in the spirit world and in our world, time moves in a different way. And although it is a decade later, everything is still very fresh, very fresh in my heart, very fresh in my mind, and very fresh in my spirit. Fire is the spark of life. The fire is something in ceremony that we honor. We give our fears to the fire. We give our, our, our memories that we'd like to um, not have haunt us to the fire. We give past regrets and things that may haunt us inside to the fire. So that sacred circle is everything to us. It's very significant, it's very sacred, and it's very powerful. Before I do this, I would like to call the Spirit out there in a good way, Makwa. Be with me in a good way. Give me that strength and courage that you carry. Give me that honor and protective spirit as you protect the tribes, as you protected the people, as you gave the first taste of your flesh to Anishinaabe to keep us from starving and make sure that we thrived on this planet. You were the first animal to ever give of yourself to us. You sacrificed yourself for us, as I now will need this strength and need this sacrifice so, so that I may carry on this work for the people, for the people of Saginaw, for the people of Ninga Aki, and for all the people and for the next seven generations, Makwa. We give thanks to you in a good way. Miigwech, Makwa. Aho. Many 
fingers. Each one has its own strength and use. But all together, it one, that's a fist. It's one, we are power. We are power. And that's the way we must all come together. You will find that most beliefs are universal. Prophets, prophecies that come to us, that are told to us, are universal on how we are meant to live, meant to honor our walk, meant to honor our ancestors. All different prophets sent to teach the people the same message, but in different languages. Brings us all together a whole bit. We honor this building now. This building feels honored. It feels loved. It feels taken care of. And in that way, it'll also take care of you. And as you enter this building, it'll also take care of you. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. 